The journey of a thousand miles is about to begin. I promise I won't make it quite that long. We're talking about Google Apps for Business. Now, the first thing we should discuss here is browsers. Now, I am using a Macintosh computer to teach this, and I love Macs, been using them for years. At university, we have Windows systems mostly in our labs. I love them, been using them for years. You might be on a Mac, you might be on a Windows system. That really doesn't make any difference, but let's talk browsers. Safari is the browser of choice for most people that use Mac, and I would suggest Explorer is probably the browser of choice for Windows. Explorer is no longer supported on a Macintosh, and Safari has never supported Windows. So what do we do? Well, it really doesn't matter. But what I want to use is Google Chrome. Now, two reasons. Number one, it puts us on a level playing field, whether we're Mac or Windows. But the other thing, as you're going to see as we move along through these lessons, is there are some advantages, actually, to using Google Chrome. Now, it's free. All you have to do is download it. So I've got it open already. First thing I need to do is get to Google Apps for Business. Now, if you're using Chrome or Safari, you can click the search criteria right up here in the area that you normally put in your URL. Google Apps for Business. Hit the Enter key. Now, you should see something like this, and this is what we want right here. Google Apps for Business. This is the landing page for Google Apps for Business. Now, it's possible that it might look slightly different than what you're seeing through my lesson right here. And the reason being is kind of like a magazine cover. They do change it occasionally. You will see the Get Started button, and that's where we want to go. Go ahead and click it. Most of the information in setting up is rather straightforward. For example, you probably know your name, so go ahead and type that in. Your current email address, the one you use at work. Your business or organization name. Always hope I spell that correctly. Number of employees in my business is between two and nine. Country is United States. Don't have to change that. Phone number. Now, if you're not from the United States, you can use a different phone number pattern right over here by clicking. Let's click Next. Your business or domain address. Now, there used to be three choices up there. Now, there's just two. Use a domain name I already have purchased, and you'll have to verify it, or buy one if you want to. Now, let's do something here. Let's stop and ponder. Yes, the great game of stopping and pondering. Give me 60 seconds. Let's say, for the sake of argument, that this hits you by surprise, that you didn't really think through the idea of the domain name. You knew you are going to get one, but you didn't know you needed it now to start Google Apps for Business. If that's the case, if you haven't done this yet, what I really want you to do, and I'm serious, is I want you to stop. I want you to close me down, quit. You can always come back to me later and really sit down and think through the name of your business because it's your domain name. If it's a wonky name or something that people can't remember, they're never going to find you. You realize how much money I would have paid to get andyanderson.com? Being that's a pretty common name on the side of the pond, not a chance. I'll never have that domain name. So I chose Real Andy. And when I'm talking to people about my website, I say it's Real Andy because there's a lot of imposters out there. And it sets you up to remember realandy.com. Now I've already got one, but if you don't, you can click here and buy it. You can buy it at other places. You don't have to do it here. But I'm going to say I want to use a domain name and then type it in down here. Click Next. Now we have to create a Google Apps account. So I'm going to choose my username right over here. I'm going to say Andy at realandy.com. Create a password. Re-enter it. Remember it. Now we have to prove we're not a robot. I don't think I'm a robot, but I'm probably pretty close. Type the text. Now that looks like 29 over there on the left. And then 6525 6894. Now, assuming I did that correctly, I then get the choice of saying I would like to receive emails and I've read and agree. Now you have to click this one and then say accept and sign up. All right, they're setting up my account. Really wasn't rocket science. The hardest thing really is if the domain name surprises you. Well, there you go. We're going to stop right now. We have set up our account. We're going to talk about users and profiles and that as we move along.